welcome to this week 8 uh, in this course on machine learning operations in this week we're going to talk about security one of the most uh, interesting and crucial topics related to any software system not just machine learning uh, but for a typical ml engineer it's uh, even more of a complex topic so therefore let's pay some attention to this there are going to be elements of uh, the content that we will discuss in this week which may not be directly under the control of machine learning engineers or practitioners because often times in enterprise settings the control of these topics is with um, IT or information security those are separate teams altogether but having said that it's important that the considerations that uh, are typically you know uh, involved in machine learning production systems is something that ml engineers and data scientists are aware of uh, there are in fact uh, some more advanced topics related to security which we may not be in a position to cover in this uh, you know elementary course on uh, elementary topic of uh, discussion that we will do this week on security but those advanced topics are even more of interest uh, potentially for those who want to pursue a dedicated degree in uh, machine learning security okay so with that said um, let's get into details i think the most interesting way to think about uh, how and why security matters for machine learning systems is to take a look at examples and nothing better than real world examples which are uh, you know which caught the eye of many people and in fact uh, in in most cases it the the, the press was negative which means the coverage was quite critical about ai systems and one of the most famous ones much before the gpt era herald uh, was this chatbot that microsoft released into the uh, wild wild you know world of the internet uh, the chatbot was named te and the persona that was attached to it was one of a, a a lady who was very keen on learning from user interactions and uh, kept having better and better judgments or uh, i would say knowledge that uh, that that she picked up as and when she interacted with the rest of the world and the way microsoft went about releasing the uh, the chatbot was as a free for all uh, twitter user with whom anybody can interact with uh, using tweets or replies etc and this was done i think uh, back in 2016 or 2017 or maybe even earlier 2015 uh, but the uh release itself you know gathered quite a bit of uh, media attention because it was one of the first of its kind and uh, since this came before gpt and its you know modern variants um it was truly a case of um you know the putting the uh, cart ahead of the horse so to speak in that sense um deep learning networks were just getting published in in you know, academic research there were some you know seminal papers from uh, various labs including uh, the nobel laureate uh, jeff hinton's lab at that time uh, but it had still not become you know uh, uh, mainstream in its um, uh, in its impact uh, so media was still not uh, really caught on to the ai buzzword so for microsoft to release this was more like a case of um hey i'm i'm extremely innovative and i've done this fantastic piece of work and you should take a look at me but turned out it backfired spectacularly so there's a link that i've put in here nsfw stands for not suitable for work uh, the main reason being the chatbot uh, got exploited in ways which were you know fundamentally very distressing for most ai practitioners because uh it became a case of um uh you know the entire industry being brushed with a uh with a single brush of you know ai is too uh, uh immature for mainstream use so uh what happened was because it was free for all um the user started interacting with it and providing various cues uh various you know interesting points of view some of which was genuinely interesting and they learned from it and became mature uh, so to speak in as much as a virtual agent can be mature but also what happened was um 
people with uh, extreme biases on topics like um, gender issues or political views or um, nationalistic views etc they started to game te into accepting their points of view and what uh, transpired within 24 hours of releasing te was uh, te had become an extremely uh, you know uh, far leaning individual um, on these sensitive topics so much so that uh, some of the answers that it started giving to pretty innocuous questions became like uh, downright um uh you know uh unethical i would say um and that became a big source of contention and microsoft had to shut it down so that was one glaring example of uh, how ml systems which were not hardened enough but uh, was released for extremely widespread usage without uh, limitations backfired spectacularly pretty much immediately the second example which was more uh, you know concerted in its effort was around the time when self driving cars became uh, quite the area of research in the silicon valley and um, there were early prototypes which were quite successful right about that time uh, there was a lab uh, um, that actually tried to engineer the the self driving cars to interpret you know a particular type of signal in a completely different way and the way they went about doing it was using something called as um, you know adversarial input injection so the example here is one of a stop sign so a self driving car uh, looks at a stop sign and is supposed to stop by the way these are obviously uh, not third world considerations but first world considerations but nevertheless so in the us the stop sign is supposed to you know be honored by any driving vehicle and if you don't uh, stop at the stop sign you get fined and potentially you get um, black marks in your driving records and things like that so it's a pretty serious affair um so the car is supposed to stop and the car does stop uh, the self driving examples at that time uh, from you know the likes of Waymo and Google and Uber etc um they did stop and but um, fundamentally they relied upon ai systems vision systems to recognize the stop sign and um, you know in- immediately interpret it but with all vision systems or at that time all image processing systems the fundamental unit of work was a cnn convolutional neural network so if you looked at convolutions of signals then you interpreted certain patterns and those patterns became the uh, meaning uh, rather those patterns formed the meaning that um, that made sense in your context so what these um, researchers did was to inject examples um basically inject small perturbations in that signal such that the uh interpretation of that particular pattern shifted quite significantly so in this case they were able to prove that um, a cnn that recognizes a stop sign uh, with small perturbations could instead interpret the stop sign as a speed limit um and those perturbations can be as simple as adding certain text or even more so certain pixels to the stop sign part of the image so that to a visual um to a visual inspection by a human it still looks like a stop sign reads like a stop sign with just some you know dirt or with some um, uh stickers on top but for a, a vision system that's built on cnns it became a completely different uh, pattern um so if you interpret a stop sign as a speed limit the car might slow down for the speed limit but it won't really stop which is the wrong thing to do so these adversarial examples were uh, quite effective in communicating the message that uh, i could completely mislead autonomous vehicle um, you know industry by uh, small perturbations in the input data a third example which was even more um, i would say anxiety inducing was this body of research that was published right about the time when um, facial recognition became like a big thing um, in fact uh, there was a startup which was quite notorious for collecting images of people from all over the world um, mainly by 
analyzing social media and internet postings, etc. Uh, I think it was called Clearview. Um, but even before that startup gained its notoriety, uh, there were actually implementations of facial recognition systems in um, pretty, you know, uh, dystopian circumstances. Like, for instance, I believe China had, indi had uh, introduced facial recognition system at, at, in mass scale for, a, for an entire city or neighborhoods of a city like Shanghai. And uh, they rolled it out with, uh, with a lot of success. But there was quite a bit of um, um, apprehension around how much of data privacy uh, issues were getting, you know, overlooked and how many users were getting sent, uh, you know, targeted in a way that was sensitive, which was uncalled for if the facial recognition system did not exist, those users would not get targeted. So one interesting research that came around that time was, um, can I use outputs of ML algorithms, especially vision algorithms, to, to, to synthesize what could have been the training data that uh, may have been used by that uh, algorithm to train. So it was very interesting from a perspective of uh, a security attack. Um, and there's a lot of you know, thought that goes into this. But in effect, what they did was they kept bombarding a facial recognition API with various images to assess whether the uh, uh, to assess whether the, that particular uh, ML API recognized who that individual was. So you need a combination of basically a name of a person associated with that image of that person. So what they found out was by repeatedly examining those combinations and understanding how the ML system was identifying individuals, they could then, uh, obviously they also used the fact that the um, algorithm would use like a CNN at, at the back end they used both of those pieces of information to reverse engineer what could the input data pattern look like broadly. But when they started to, you know, really deep dive into it, they realized that uh, they could get a pretty accurate picture of what the input data, input data could look like um, that was used in the training. So in this case, uh, an image that was used for the um, training was actually this, this, this person's face that you see on the right. But with repeat, uh, you know, queries of uh, name visual pairs to the same system, they could reconstruct uh, that uh, individual's face uh, to, a to a pretty surprisingly close degree. Right? That, that's what you see on the left. So these kinds of problems are what's called as a model extraction problem or model inversion problem, uh, whereby uh, the training data for a model training exercise is uh, not completely secure from discovery or from uh, being synthesized by an attacker if uh, they know exactly, you know, if they have unlimited access to the API, that's number one. Um, and they also know broadly the architecture that was used in the back end, right? So it's a pretty interesting attack. The next uh, example is also quite interesting. So this happens quite frequently with all of us, uh, maybe not in the current avatar because this avatar was fixed a while back, but you can imagine variations of this pretty, um, you know, that are pretty applicable. So let's take a look at an email spam filter. The way it works is by looking at an email body and looks for various cues, um, and then it uh, automatically flags this as a spam or not spam. So in this example, it's evident even as a user that uh, this looks like a spam message. So both the system and the human think that it's a spam. If you look at the next example, uh, it looks like it's presenting something that's quite interesting for us, potentially interesting. But then it's got a link updated um, to it and the link is leading up to potentially a website which has spam intentions. So the system thinks it's spam. Uh, the system here could mean something like Gmail. But a human says that it's not spam. This could happen for a couple of reasons. One, the human generally thinks that this weekly register form opportunities is quite interesting and then they ignore the fact that the link is pointing to something that's completely unrelated. Or if an attacker gets access to the email inbox of this individual or the system or the or I should say the machine where the user is accessing this uh, email, they could give feedback which is opposite of what the system has actually learned 
and keep getting and keep giving these examples with wrong labels such that eventually the machine learning system treats variations of these emails as not spam so for instance this last message um it kind of looks like the first message but also looks like the second message so it's like a hybrid but because of the constant feedback that's been given especially with few samples recently the system now thinks that this is not spam and it allows this message to go through but as a user genuinely would have thought that this is spam because it advertises things which are spammy but in this example the key part is that uh, the human feedback which introduces the uh, opposite labeling to what the user system is expecting need not be large in number as large a number as when the system was trained in the first place to detect spam it it can be a small set of examples and it could also be human engineered or socially engineered by by the attacker to uh, be flagged in a wrong way either because they have hacked the device or they incentivize users to behave in a certain way which is opposite of what the system is expecting so that's another example of an attack so in fact if you look at um, there are other examples which are interesting some of them i just mentioned that briefly uh, so remember the autonomous vehicles example we spoke about so there is another variation of it which is quite interesting which was to place stickers on top of the signs physically so that when the car goes through it normally would recognize that sign as a let's say a stop sign or a pedestrian sign but because of the sticker it got tricked into you know interpreting it as something else again at, at the end of the day the base concept is one of pixel based uh, uh, perturbations and it makes that uh, entire process quite sensitive to small changes that happen in the data set uh, model stealing is quite an interesting example we'll take a look at it a little later with uh, with one of the most interesting developments in the ml world uh, of late membership inference is a uh, quite a fascinating way to look at um, how to break data privacy so as the name suggests uh, the way that uh, this attack works is by trying to figure out if a certain type of data set was used in the training so instead of trying to synthesize you try to uh guess by intelligently navigating the parameter space so it becomes an interesting way to uh, extract out information about patients in a healthcare system uh without even having access to the raw data directly okay so let's break it down further um in the next video where we talk about what are the challenges associated with securing ml